This message is for people in leadership positions within corporate America, very specifically white people, whether you're in management positions, C-suite executives, or CEOs of company. Please take a listen to this message because if you have black and brown people who work under you, in light of all that is going on in the world today, whether it's Ahmaud Arbery, um, Breonna Taylor, uh, Amy Cooper in the Central Park incident, or George Floyd in Minnesota, the world has been turned upside down. And with all of the rioting, with all of the protesting, I look and there's so much good that has come out of it. I look and there's hope that's in my heart because I see so many white people, white people who are marching and protesting alongside of black and brown people. It is like the first time that the light has gone on, like literally I, for whatever reason, whether it was the knee on George Floyd's neck or it's just enough is enough. It's the first time that I've ever seen in my lifetime that there is a light that has gone on to where white people are finally seeing through the eyes, through the lens, through the vernacular of black people, what we live and go through every single day, not just at the hands of the police, but in all aspects of our life. And when this is all over, people are going to be coming back to work. And it is your duty. It is your duty not to just leave it out there on the streets, not to just say, I walked a few miles and I held hand in hand in solidarity with my black neighbor and I fought for those cops to be arrested. No, change, change, true change. It is ongoing and you have to. And what I love about what I saw, Dr. Phil, he has this wonderful saying, you cannot fix what you don't acknowledge. And in so many cases, nothing was ever being fixed because white people would not acknowledge that they were part of the problem because they never saw themselves as racist. Just because they were not wearing a, a, a KKK hood, just because they were not at the, 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 the protests in Charlottesville, they were not shooting down black people. Hey, I have nothing to do with what my ancestors did. You did not understand the privilege that you guys had just by mere, <clears throat> just by mere point of you being born white. And for us, for black people, for black men and for black women, the odds are stacked against us, not just on the streets with these crooked cops, not just the fact that they have cops that are not from our neighborhoods, that do not see us as human beings patrolling and po policing our neighborhoods. But even when we go, you know, in for, for jobs and we send our resumes, black people have colorful names. There are liquidators. There are all different types of names. And we know when we send a resume in and it has our name, you don't think that we know that that white person who is head of HR is taking our resume, no matter how accomplished it is, and putting it to the side because they know that is a black person or that is a brown person or that is somebody of a different ethnicity that is on the other side of that resume. I can even speak for myself, me being a business owner, me being a person who created a company that, that specializes in grassroots and alternative marketing. My company and myself, I've worked alongside Sean Diddy Combs for many years, helping to build bad boy records from the ground up, you know, just really executing these, these unorthodox, out-of-the-box grassroots campaign that have taken records and made them gold and platinum hits. But when I go out and, you know, especially in the beginnings of my company, it became readily apparent to me if I wanted to get business, if I wanted corporate brands to use my services, although they wanted to get their brand and their product out to black and brown people, I could not walk into the, their office to pitch as the face, the founder and the CEO of my own company. I literally had to bring white people in and have them stand in front of me and them pitch my services 
as though they were the founder and CEO of the company and I would sit there quiet. And that was the only way that my business was able to get business for so, from so many corporate brands. You don't think that we know, or even myself, I speak, you know, just from personal experience, me being a black man who is six foot four, 200 plus pounds. When I walked in the room, I was a threat. I, I, I could come in suited and booted. I, I can, I can be speaking the Queen's English, but until I started to put white people as the face of my company, a company that marketed and promoted to black and brown people, we could not get business. These are the things that are stacked against us. So yes, you cannot fix what you don't acknowledge. The conversation has started, but please do not let it end on the streets. Please, when you get back to work on Monday, when, when the offices finally do open up from COVID and, and the quarantine is over or whether it's done through Zoom calls or what have you, talk to your black and brown employees and just listen. Say, I, I I might not understand. I might not have ever saw myself as racist, but at least I understand that as maybe a white man or a white woman, I do not know the, 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 I, I, I have not had the ability to walk a mile in your shoes. Why don't you educate me? What, you know, just, just in day to day as black people, Black people can't come into the office with braids in their hair. Black people cannot come into the office dressed a certain way because we know we are looked at different. We know when we literally walk into those buildings, we have to be 10 times more on point, 10 times more sharper than our white counterparts. And still we are overlooked time and time again for leadership positions and promotions and raises. If you can at least acknowledge that there is bias there, whether it is conscious or unconscious on your part, it's a start. If you can at least, you know, myself, when we used to go in and pitch to these clients, we would pitch for multicultural business, multicultural business. African American, AA or Latinx business. And there would not be one black person in the room. There would not be one Latin person in the room. How do you have full departments that are, are looking to market and promote your product to black and brown people? And you do not have one black person in the room, one Latin person in the room, one multicultural person in the room, but these are multicultural departments. You have to look yourself in the mirror and ask, like, you're part of the problem. Please start, if, if, you know, I believe these positions are to be earned. I believe that these positions should be given to the best person, but you cannot tell me that in all cases across the board, there is always a white person that is more qualified to, 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 to market and promote and, and, and to be in leadership positions, especially when marketing and promoting to, to the black community than a black or brown person. How could you know what we, what we experience and, and how we receive messaging if you have never lived and worked amongst us? If, you know, we know our community better than you. So, if you are a white person, I am asking you, don't let it stop now because the four officers have been charged and arrested. Don't let it stop because you feel you have done your part and you walked alongside a black and a brown person. This is where the real work begins, and it begins with just taking a step back and accepting there might be some cultural biases that I have. There might be some things about me. No, I might not be a racist, but just by virtue of being born white, living in your skin, I cannot tell you what it is to be a white person because I've never been a white person. 
Just like you can't tell me what it is to be a black man because you have never been a black man. But if you are willing to listen and you are willing to sit your staff down and have empathy and open your mind up to the fact that I do have biases, but we are willing to hear you and start bringing in people of different ethnicities in leadership position and starting to allow black and brown people to have a seat at the table. It is a start. This is going to be ongoing. It is not going to stop. But if you find yourself a black, I mean, excuse me, a white or, or a white woman or white man in a leadership position, I implore you to listen to your team. That is a start. Acknowledge I may have some biases, whether it is conscious or unconscious. That is a start. Just wanted to send that out because I believe that the work is just getting started. And I would encourage everybody, everybody. We have a major election coming up. I, I think that this country is raw. The Band-Aid has been ripped off the wound. And your vote, my vote, all of our votes, it counts. Let's show this guy in the White House that we are bigger than his bigotry, that we are greater than his divisiveness, than all of the things that he would have you believe that we are. You want to make America great again? Great. Get him out of the White House and we will start being great. Matter of fact, we are about to make America great. Not again, because it was never great, because it was never inclusive. But getting him out of the White House is a start. And then we can be on the road to becoming great. Peace and love make every move a power move. And, you know, I'll, I'll make another video in the, in the near future. I love y'all.